title of the course is How to Lose Weight Without Going Hungry. Uh, but the whole thrust of this is how to lower carbohydrates and increase fat in your diet. Because doing that will bring you back to the weight you're supposed to be without any other effort <coughs> and without suffering like you often do when you're on a low fat or calorie restricted diet and are hungry all the time. And what I've talked about in the past is how when you're hungry all the time, guess what? That diet will not last, period. Because hunger always wins, okay? It doesn't matter who you are or what. Uh, if you're hungry, you're gonna eat. So what you need to do is change types of food you're eating that give you satiation. So we need a better word than that, but when, you're, when you have satiety, it means you don't feel hungry, okay? And not being hungry means that you're not thinking about food all the time. And guess what? I've been doing this for seven years. Katie's been doing it for, what, five, six months? Steady. I've been on low-carb diets off and on for about 15 years. Okay. But I've been really good for the past five there years. There you go. So when you're <laughs> on them, you're not hungry, okay? And when you go off and you want to try to lose weight, you will be hungry. I always start with my uh, um, little disclaimer here that I'm a psychologist, not a physician. Uh, talk to your doctor if you're going to make any changes, particularly if you're on medication. Um, what I just said is that we've been told forever that fat was the problem, right? You've heard that over and over again. Lower fat, lower fat, lower fat. And in fact, the dietary guidelines continue to suggest that even though they took away the limits on fat, they're bizarre. Um, but if you look at most advice about dieting, you're going to get this uh, um, advice to to cut fats, um, but the, the problem is that uh, if you take fats out of food, you replace it with what? Carbohydrates, sugars, refined grains, etc. Um, what do refined grains do with the sugars in your body? As soon as they get in your mouth, your body begins digesting them, turning them into glucose, which goes into your bloodstream. As soon as that glucose is in your bloodstream, we're talking a few minutes, okay? Your pancreas has no choice but to marshal its troops out and send insulin out to get the sugar out of your bloodstream. It's not good for you to have blood sugar, okay? If you're diabetic, like I once was, then you've got too much sugar in your blood, okay? So what you need to do is to keep from stimulating your body's natural response to sugar. <coughs> Simply reduce the things that stimulate insulin. And there's only one of them, that's carbohydrates. Um, so if you're gonna replace carbohydrates with something, you have two choices, protein or fat. Do you need a lot of protein? No. You've heard of protein diets and one thing or another. But guess what, no, you don't need a lot of protein. You know, four to six ounces a day is plenty, okay? And most people get plenty of protein. If you eat more protein, a lot more than you need, guess what your body turns it into? Not fat, glucose, glucose through neoglucogenesis, okay? Your liver will convert too much protein back into carbohydrates. Not a good idea, okay? So you don't need more protein, but you do need to replace the food that you're taking out, all the carbohydrates, with something. And guess what that is? Fat. Okay, we're going to talk today all about fats and oils, so you'll understand that a little better in terms of what you're eating. But the warning has always been that fat will do what? Make you fat. What's that? Make you fat. Well, make you fat, number one. Okay, what else? Clog your arteries. Cholesterol. Raise your cholesterol. And if you have high cholesterol, then you're going to die of a heart attack, right? So I literally have people who come to these classes and go, oh, I can't eat all that fat, I will die. We have done such a good job in this country over the last 40 years of convincing people that you will die if you eat fat, that people are totally fat phobic. It took me two years to get over that. And what you have to do is eat a lot of fat, go get your cholesterol checked, and what do you find out when you eat a lot of fat and get your cholesterol levels checked? Pardon me? They go down, okay? Not up, down. Try it, okay? And this is exactly the science behind this. And it, it has been such a, a miseducation program. And I could go on for hours about why we got that way. There's wonderful books on this. Uh, 
probably the big fat surprise by Nina Teicholz is the best one. It's a great read. It's like a mystery novel. But you'll really get into the weeds about how we got to the point we are where we're saying fat is bad for you. Uh, fat does not stimulate insulin like carbohydrates do, so your pancreas isn't pumping out the insulin. You'll burn. The more fat you eat, the more body fat you will burn. Strange, huh? But when people go on low carb, high fat diets, they're eating all they want, and they're standing on the scale and they're going, oh my God, I just lost another two pounds. What is this? Eating fat gets rid of fat. If you haven't tried it, don't believe me. Do it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so we could go into the whole thing about weight gain, that you eat carbs, that's what puts the fat on your body because all the sugar that you don't burn you end up storing as fat. Your body has no choice. We do not excrete carbohydrates, okay? I don't want to get gross about it, but whatever goes in stays in, all right? You can do a little workout and get burn a few. How many calories did I say you probably burned in this last hour? Two or three hundred. Okay. That's out of how many a day that are people? People are generally eating like 2,000, okay? And every time you burn those two or 300 calories, what's going to happen? What's your body going to want to do? Eat. Eat. Replace the two or 300 calories. So you get hungry. Okay. So the, I just read yet another research article about, you know, it's so abundantly clear that exercise all by itself does not cause long-term weight loss. Yeah, you can work out and lose some water and one thing or another, lose a pound or two. Okay, but your body will recover all of that and more. In fact, they've just done a number of studies on long distance runners, and they find out that people who are in top shape physically aren't burning any more calories than you or I just sitting here. Okay, because their bodies adjust. It's really fascinating in terms of how our bodies are capable of making adjustments to what we do and what we eat. That's why the whole notion of calories in, calories out, you know, calorie balance and all that, you have to, for every, you know, calorie you take in, you've got to expend so much energy. Well, that would be fine if we were a machine. We're not. We're a hormonal-driven organism that has all kinds of systems that work to balance things. You or I are no more capable of precisely balancing our calorie intake with our energy output than Einstein was, okay? You can't do it, all right? Your body will take care of it, and when you're eating the right foods, you will achieve a healthy body balance, and you don't have to think about it. Isn't that nice? So, those are the kinds of diets we're talking about, okay? The food pyramid turned upside down. That is to say, eat your fats, your proteins, lots of, uh, eggs, fish, etc. lots of vegetables. This is not the old Atkins, you know, porterhouse steak diet. This is half your plate should be vegetables, and the other half should be proteins and fats, okay? Um, so things like whole wheat, cereals, and pasta, and stuff like that, for quite frankly, I haven't had any of those in seven years either. You know? I mean, it's just gone from my diet. I don't think of that as food anymore. Okay? It's stuff that people put in their mouths. I don't know why. Um, so, what about fats and oils? And that's what we're going to really get into uh, for a few minutes this morning. You have to distinguish between, we have poor language in our, in our culture. We talk about fat on our bodies and use the same word for fat in our arteries, don't we? Okay? We talk about, you know, if, if uh, we're on a diet, we're low fat, so we're not taking in fat, so that must have something to do with the fat on our bodies. Yeah? Makes sense. Same word, okay? You know, fat in, fat on, you know, that kind of thing. However, um, most fat comes not from eating fat, but from eating carbohydrates. Our bodies are carbohydrate sensitive. Our bodies go for the carbs number one. You put a carb in, that's the source of energy your body is going to go for. Okay? 
So until all those carbs are used, it will not go to the fat stored in your body for energy. So every carb you eat, in a sense, is putting a stop sign up for fat burning. Okay, it's telling your body, I got enough energy, don't need to go to stored fat. Doesn't that make sense? Because what's stored fat for anyway? We talked about last week, the week before. Why do people need to put on weight? What's good about carrying extra weight? Not in the United States in the 21st century, but maybe in the 17th century during a period of famine, or three or four thousand years ago when you had to go for a whole winter like this without any food. Okay, so your ability to burn body fat was critical. Okay, so you eat a few carbs, fine. You get what roots and you know I don't know nothing or whatever you can get at this time of year. And then the rest of it comes off of body fat, okay? And people are good at fat, you know? We know how to store, our bodies know how to store fat, know how to burn fat. And in the absence of any other food source, that's exactly what we will use. How many people in this country are starving? Anybody uh, go without food for 24 hours? Three hours? <laughs> I mean, you know, we have so much food, 24 seven, we're just soaked <coughs> in food in this culture. Okay? Our bodies don't ever have a chance to recover, okay? get back to where they should be. We're really designed for fasting, and I'm going to talk about fasting in a later session of this class. But we're, our bodies are really designed to fast periodically. Okay? We're, we're better off metabolically if we don't eat for periods of time. Now, typically that's you know, six, eight hours overnight, but that can be from lunch one day to lunch the next day, or it can be a whole day without food. Or I know people who fast for a week at a time, okay? Yeah, and exactly, that's, wow, how do they, it's kind of like getting over the idea of how do I eat fat, boy, that seems extreme, to how do I go without any food at all? How can I do that? And I thought that was the case myself. Try it sometime you'll find it's very interesting how quickly our bodies adapt to not having food. The worst thing is hunger, which, guess what? It goes away. And people who fast will tell you, after the first day, they're not hungry. Okay? Not hungry. Hello? Okay, so if you're not hungry, you're not going to eat. Your body does fine burning its own fat. And for periods of time, as long as you, you, you've been well supplied with nutrients most of the time, there's no danger in that whatsoever. Okay? People fast all the time. Remember Gandhi, he used to fast for months at a time. Uh, you, know, you will not die from fasting. You will die from overeating carbohydrates. Okay? So if you want to be afraid of something, think of that. Right. So we'll talk about fasting in the future. But getting back to fats here, fats circulate in our blood in little packages. Okay. You've heard of LDL and HDL, those are lipoproteins. Fat doesn't move around inside our bloodstream all by itself. We don't have little globules of fat. I'm sure a lot of people think they do. Eat fat and eat <coughs> fat floating around. Right, that's the fat that clogs your arteries, right? Just like plumbing. Well, no, it's in little, encased in little particles that carry those fats. Those particles are called lipoproteins. And some of them, uh, take fat from our liver and move it out to where our body's needed in our cells. And some kind of clean up and take the unused lipoproteins back to the liver. The ones that do the cleanup job are called HDL. Okay? That's your good cholesterol. Why is it good? It's good because it returns cholesterol. It cleans the, the, the arteries uh, so it keeps them clear in that regard. Whereas LDL, you still need LDL, you need to have fat mobilized to your cells, okay? There's nothing wrong with LDL, it's not bad in the sense that, that this is something that you shouldn't have, but we'll talk a little bit about what happens to certain kinds of LDL, and that in particular, the LDL packages are either, ready, light and fluffy, or small and dense, okay? So think about the beach ball kind of floating around, and then think about a little baseball floating around, okay? One's big and soft, and, okay? Well, it turns out 
that between those two types of LDL, the big fluffy one is not a problem, okay? It is not correlated with heart disease, it's not correlated with arterial sclerosis, but the little dense package ones are. Why? Because if you're small and dense, and we're talking microscopic levels here, you can get stuck along the way in the artery wall. There's enough space between the cells and the artery wall that those little particles get lodged in there. And when you stick around for a long time and you're made out of fat, what happens? Have you ever left fat out for a long time? Pardon me? Coagulates and it becomes oxidized or rancid, okay? And if it stays there for a long time, the cell artery wall does not like that, okay? It gets irritated and inflamed, okay? You have a sore, if you will, on the inside of your artery. And in time, those sores need to be healed. What does our body use to heal itself? All our cells, all through our body, are constructed with the thing we were told that we shouldn't eat for the last 30 years, and then last year, we were told, you know what you want, it's not a problem. <laughs> That's from the USDA. Cholesterol, okay, cholesterol is a type of, it's a waxy substance, it's not fat, but it's, it's a substance that the body uses to build cell walls, okay. Well, if you've got a sore, an inflammation on the inside of an artery, then your body's gonna use that same technique, put some cholesterol on it, okay smooth it over, okay, cover it up. So that's all, it can't get in there and dislodge the little particles, but it can keep the sore from hopefully getting worse. Okay, that, that works for a while until what? Until the cholesterol buildup becomes so big that, yeah, it, yeah, it either clogs the arteries, you get an occlusion, so you can't get any blood through, and what do we call that if it's in your brain? You lose blood supply to one small portion of your brain, we say you're having a stroke, right? Okay, That's, and then you go to the hospital, get yourself to a hospital within 15 minutes because they can give you medication that will unclog that, okay? Um, and lots of people now recover from strokes if they get the treatment right away. So that's one thing that happens. Probably the worst thing that happens in terms of life and death that you can live after a stroke is what? If it breaks off, that piece of chunk of cholesterol, you know, breaks and travels, and then goes right to your heart. Boom! You got an inclusion in your heart. Your heart muscle dies and starves with oxygen, and you have a heart attack. You know, the crushing pain. You know, down the left arm. All classic heart attack symptom. Okay. Unfortunately, you know, the cholesterol busting may or may not work there. They're actually doing stuff there. They're, they're inserting stents and one thing or another. We've gotten a lot better at keeping people alive who've had a heart attack. That's, that's the good news. The bad news is we haven't done much better in terms of reducing the amount of heart attacks in the first place. Why? Because we're eating the kinds of stuff that creates low density lipoproteins that get lodged in the artery wall, okay, and that create inflammation, that create cholesterol buildup, and then that breaks up and then we have a heart attack. So what do you suppose causes those little tiny particles? Is it from eating too much fat? No. no. It's from carbs, sugars, and refined grains. And, and I just listened to a, a terrific lecture that was on the, the web uh, this past week with Ron Krauss, who's out at UCLA and does just wonderful research work. He's been working, he works, he's a consultant to the American Heart Association. He's in charge of a lot of the research that goes on. And he was very clear. He says, fat is not a problem, okay? What we need to worry about are these carbs and refined grains, okay? That's what's causing these very low dense VLDL particles, okay? Um, so you see as these little tiny particles lodge in the wall, then you create the inflammation and they they become oxidized because of inflammation and there's a lot of the outer walls. You probably, but the, the inflammation that's really more destructive is this very low grade inflammation, it's like a very low grade fever, if you will, where you've got kind of irritation throughout your entire body. You're not aware of it, except 
may not have the most energy and things of that sort. But that's what's taking the toll over time. So inflammation is something you want to avoid at all costs, okay? Um, so problem of the, is that inflammation leads to plaques that break off and lead to heart attack, heart attack or stroke. Um, the lower the level of BLDL particles, you can get that measured, by the way. You can go have, get yourself an APOV test. Your doctor will order it and go, how did you know about that? Um, APO, AP, capital A, small P O, B, large capital B. That's going to measure your uh, particles uh, density in, in your blood. Won't cut you, they'll pay for it. I, I get it done every now and then. And one thing that will happen when you're eating more fat is that your LDL levels will rise a little bit, always do. Your HDL will rise even more. That's good, doing a better job taking those over. But what you want to be sure of is that the LDL that's going up is going up because of the light fluffy particles and not the small dense. If you're eating a low carb diet, it won't be a problem, okay? If you're contingent, if you eat a lot of fat and eat a lot of carbs, that's the typical American diet, you know, pizza, classic example, lots of carbs and lots of fat, okay, all together, all right? That stuff will clog your arteries, okay? Take the carbs away, however, your light fluffies may go up a little, but your small dense will not, and APO, uh, APOB test will tell you. Mine was a 93, it has to be under 120. Um, so even though my HDL has gone up a little bit, my particle size has not gone up. Okay. You're going to have a conversation to educate your doctors, I hope. Okay? <laughs> because believe me, a lot of them are going, huh? Uh, I haven't looked at that. Uh, you know, Just order the test and then bring it back and say, okay, now tell me, am I okay? <laughs> Don't find out. You're okay. All right? And you say, well, that's because I've been eating a lot of fat and reducing my carbohydrates. And then they'll go, oh, really? And you're losing weight? And your cholesterol level's going down? Huh, and your blood pressure's going down too, huh? What are you doing? <laughs> and then what do they say? Well, keep it up. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because the results are great, all right? They won't tell you to do it, but they won't mind if you do. Um, so what should we eat? All fats other than trans fats. Trans fats are what? Where do they come from? Remember I said Crisco was trans fats in a can? They don't make it that way anymore, but trans fats are hydrogenated oils. You ever look in the fat, you know, it says hydrogenated oil, you know? If you see the word hydrogenated, throw it away, okay? It's not good. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't some trans fats in natural foods. Don't worry about those. But the man-made trans fats are deadly, so deadly, as I said last week, they had to shut down an experiment because the the uh, control group who was eating um, the, uh, the, the experimental group who was eating trans fats were getting heart attacks while they were running the, the test, the program. Um, so, saturated fats also increase HDL, the good, uh, and we can reduce the level by, of BLDL by reducing sugars and fine, refined grains. So, this stuff here, okay? Anybody eating that? <coughs> You don't have to confess, it's all right. I like cereal. Oh, you like cereal? Everybody likes cereal, <laughs> right? And like, everybody like likes sugar. Something. There's no That's question that this stuff makes you, makes your mouth happy, right? Isn't that true? Corn flakes. Yeah, corn flakes, wonderful, okay? <laughs> and all that stuff, yeah. And put your skin and milk out, because you don't want too much fat, you know? Remember, how about the special K diet? Okay? Yeah, <laughs> and the low meat. Amanda, who wants, she and her baby are getting along, you know, she'll be coming and talking to us. She's the South Coast dietitian who works with this stuff all the time. And, and she said uh, she had a woman who came in and she had put on 10 pounds in the previous week. And she said, oh, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I went on the special K diet. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, of course, because that's what the advertising tells you, that that's a good thing. Well, by the time you have your your refined, very super refined grains in your cereal, and then no fat in your milk, which still has some sugar in it, and then throw a banana on top, okay? <coughs> You've got a recipe for disaster, okay? That's not only weight gain, but all this kind of problem we're talking about in, in, in terms of 
blood. So cereal, I'll tell you what, I'll pass this out right now. Here's a list of things you, you, you can go to when you go to the grocery store. Nice, quick, easy, take, take two or three and pass them. Um, the list of what should be on your shopping list. You notice that cereal is not on there. Okay, I, somebody was, was somebody here asking me about uh, uh, oatmeal and things of that sort. And, yeah, well, as grains go, because if you get steel cut oatmeal, it just takes a little longer to digest, so you won't get a blood sugar spike. But every carbohydrate converts to sugar. Doesn't matter. Okay, and if it's whole grain, yes. 6% of it is uh, fiber, so that won't digest, so you get that little bit of savings out of it, but the 93% of it is still going to turn to sugar, okay? Yes, it doesn't spike your blood, your insulin, you know, quite as fast, but um, in the long run, you're still going to, you're going to end up wearing it. It's not going to go somewhere. So what's good for breakfast? What's good for breakfast? Or oatmeal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, uh, well, uh, you know, it, eggs every day. Well, I have uh -huh. I have two eggs every day. I've had for the last seven years. Right. And then I have that I with what? I get sick of eating the same thing. Pardon? I get sick. Of you get sick of eating the same thing. I can't. Well, there there are different ways to cook eggs, and you can mm -hmm. do uh, potatoes and things of that sort. Yeah. You can have uh, hard boiled eggs, etc. Or guess what you can do, folks. <laughs> We have this whole mindset in this country about everything at breakfast needs to look like breakfast. You know? There are certain foods we eat for breakfast and then other foods we don't eat. You don't eat cereal for lunch or dinner, but what you do it for breakfast. What do you eat meat in the morning? I can't. Well, you, you, so if you don't like meat, what do you, what's your favorite food to eat throughout the day? Throughout the day? Yeah. Chicken. Chicken. I like a lot of veggies. Guess what? Chicken and veggies for breakfast. I don't think so. <laughs> Too early for me. It's all a matter of what you get used Too to. Too early for me. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong. A lot of people simply eat what they didn't finish the night before. <coughs> Quite frankly, if you're on a low carb diet, you'll end up pushing food away, saying, "I'm full. I'm sorry." You know. So that's your breakfast for the next morning. Okay, you don't have to cook it. Just warm it up. All right. In the morning, I'm too picky in the morning. Well, if you're picky in the morning, tell you what. Fast. <laughs> Don't eat anything. <laughs> Have a cup of bulletproof coffee. Put some uh, some uh, butter and uh, um, this this should be your friend yet, here. I'll so. pass this <laughs> coconut oil. Okay. Oh, coconut oil. Okay. Which, if you get the refined version of it, got all kinds of things in here. If you get the refined version of it, you will not taste anything. It's neutral. Okay. Doesn't. You know, you think it's going to taste like coconut, it doesn't. Um, and you can put that in your coffee and you will not taste it, okay? You'll taste the coffee, okay? But it's a nice way to get fat in the morning without having to eat. You have a cup of, of that with a couple of tablespoons of, of fat in it. You're, you're not going to be hungry. You're, that's breakfast, okay? So it's nice and quick. You don't like eggs or you don't want to eat things that you might eat the rest of the day. I don't see milk on no. What's in milk? Well, skim milk has a lot of sugar. All milk has sugar, lactase. Okay. What about regular milk? Regular milk has sugar and fat, so you can eat that and drink that, but you're going to get a lot of sugar with that. The better way to go with uh, dairy products is with cheese, where in the process you lose the sugar okay, and just get the fat. So what do you put in cereal? What, well, I don't know why you're eating cereal. I don't know. I guess that's the problem. If you're eating cereal, you might as well put anything you want on it because it's not going to be good for you. <laughs> what, what I use instead of milk, because I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, I use unsweetened almond milk. There you go. Which has, I love it. I actually can't have um, cream in my coffee anymore. I've gotten so used to the almond milk. <coughs> And you and can get almond milk either unflavored or vanilla flavored. Yep, I get the unsweetened well, vanilla. Well, you can drink that anyway because they're lactose intolerant and things yep. of that sort. And in eight, ounces, yeah, in eight ounces, there's, I think, two carbs. So right. you think of how much you use in a cup of coffee. Um, it's not much. Right. Yeah. So it's low carb. Okay. okay. But, again, I'd ask, why are you eating syrup? <laughs> okay. I like the milk. Unsweetened almond milk? Pardon me? I like the milk. 
I'll, well, I'll, I'll you know, I'll tell you, if I were going to have anything yeah, like this, like, like I'll have berries in full fat cream, okay, which is 42% fat. Yeah. Absolutely. And you go, because we've been told what? Yeah, which will do what? Gain weight. Yeah, put fat on. Okay, and what I'm telling you is look at the research, look at what people are doing, but better yet, try it yourself. Okay, if you go on dietdoctor.com, okay, great website, fabulous. He's got a whole program, a two week program for going on low carb. Okay, tell you what to eat and what, what have you. And I will talk to people till the cows come home who will not try this, who will sit there and say, huh. I don't know, I don't think I can do that, et cetera. And then the light goes off and they say, okay, I'm gonna try it. I'll just see. That Dr. Weed, he thinks he knows so much. And then what happens? It works. It works, okay? Plain and simple, it works. Get, you know, line up, go to, find out where the South Coast health van is so you can get your cholesterol checked <laughs> without paying anything, okay? Or go to your doctor or whatever, you know? Arrange for that. After two weeks on this diet, okay, it's not a diet, after two weeks of changing what you eat, okay, and watch your scale, okay, so you get your cholesterol and your weight all in that two-week period of time. If you're on high blood pressure medication, you may, if your weight goes down, you'll probably see some reductions in that as well. And if you're on diabetes medication, you need to talk to somebody about that because what will happen is if you take insulin, the insulin is there to take care of all the extra carbohydrates you're putting in your body, if you stop putting carbohydrates in, you're, you uh, could end up uh, having a, a hypoglycemia and feel dizzy and faint and all that kind of stuff. So you gotta be careful if you're working on those meds. That's when you need to you tell your doctor, this is what I'm gonna do, and he's gonna say you're nuts, and you do it, and he, he tells you how much insulin to cut back on, and sure enough, you lose weight, your cholesterol goes down, and you feel great, and he says, well, I guess you don't need that much insulin anymore. Or maybe we'll take you off it all together. Not bad, huh? Okay, we're almost wrapped up here, and then Katie, we're gonna talk. Um, so we talk about we talked about the different kinds of fats, which are better for you. Um, these, you know, your diet really, if you to put fats in your diet, talk about butter, olive oil, and coconut oil, and then foods like eggs. Um, also, avocados, terrific source of fats. Anybody here eat avocado? I don't like that. Okay, you don't like those either. Well, you're missing out on a lot. These are the facts. Um, extra virgin olive oil, avocados, avocado oil, which is expensive, so I don't buy it. Um, not oil, same thing. I mean, if you go to Joblet, the uh, canister, uh, there you go, with the uh, coconut oil, I think that was like $5. $5.99, yeah. yeah. I yeah. sell it twice in a And it'll last forever. Yeah, it lasts yeah. a long time. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You make popcorn like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you could, except why are you eating popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> See? That's, that's those creeping carbohydrates, right? Oh, so good. I know. How can I live without this? My wife makes popcorn every other night that she eats. I haven't had it in seven years. Okay? Once you get off carbs, it's really very interesting. Once you're off carbs, it's like people are eating cardboard. You don't, you don't know why are they eating that stuff. Um, and and that's, that's where the difficulty comes, that the very thing that's giving you problems is the very thing we're either addicted to, love, culture supports, et cetera, et cetera. You know. So it's a big shift in terms of you know, what, what you're eating. But you may be able to eat some popcorn, okay? If, right, if, well, moderation to the extent that if you're, if you're cutting a lot of other carbs, and that's the only carb you're eating, Right. Pumpkin so, but I don't like a pre-packaged popcorn. I make it, you know, Oh yeah, packed. you should just yeah, just buy like corn. Right. You put it in the paper bag and you pop it, and air pop it, and then, yeah. And you if you, you, you know, if you want to put some fat on, okay, the fat's good for you. But like I said, fats and carbs together, that's what puts weight on. Pardon me. Where you bought it? Where did I buy those? I, I actually got those over at uh, TJ Maxx. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I'm cooking oils quickly here. These are the oils to avoid. Okay, why? Things like 
Mazzola oil, canola oil, corn oil, okay? Well, how are these manufactured? I'll give you a hint. There's a picture right there. Under high pressure and high heat, okay? Um, we, uh, seed oils are a recent invention, last hundred years, okay? Prior to that, all people had was animal fats. But we've been moving toward seed oils for a long time in our culture. And there's some speculation that a lot of our difficulties, cancer, uh, heart disease, diabetes, etc., may be related as much to our increased use of processed oils as it is our increased use of carbs and sugars. Okay, uh, That's speculative at this point. However, um, the problem with these oils is the same problem I was telling you about before in terms of the particle size in, in your arteries, and that's that these oils, once they're heated, become, become easily rancid, uh, oxidized, okay? And the oxidation, putting something in your body that oxidizes easily is just asking for trouble. There's no reason you need to eat any of these oils. These are the kind of oils that are in most commercial products. And we all know that processed food has not done well in terms of the American wasteland, right? <laughs> okay. So if, you know, if you've got some of this stuff, you don't need it, give it to somebody else. Um, sunflower oil, sunflower seeds? Yeah, well, there, there's some oil and sunflower seeds. The seeds are fine because you're getting a lot of fiber from them. But this is, the oils that you don't see are the ones in all the processed food, fast foods, it's everywhere. But you don't even know it's there because they don't tell you it's there. Um, so to get good fats, eat foods like nuts and seeds that have fats. Those are excellent fats for you, by the way. Olive oil, if you're gonna, if you're not gonna heat it, okay. Olive oil also will oxidize it. You know, you know how you've had olive oil and you try to fry something with things smoking and stuff. That's not good. Okay. That's why you need coconut oil because it won't smoke and it withstands high heat very well. Uh, but olive oil is good for salads. Uh, you know, things that you're eating cold, okay? Olive oil's a good, it's a seed, okay? Olives are a seed. Uh, it's a good oil because it's cold pressed. They don't use high temperature and high pressure to, to uh, extract the oil. Um, and then obviously fish, particularly oily fish, great source of uh, fats, eggs, uh, and meat. And meat does not, you know, there's a lot of controversy about red meat and whether you should overeat it, and we can talk about that sometime, but if you like red meat, there's no reason not to have it two or three times a week. Uh, and the red meat you should get should save yourself some money and buy the, the low quality cut that has all the fat on it that nobody wants. Oh, they all want the 90% lean hamburger and stuff. <laughs> no, get, get the fattest uh, meat that you can find and eat the fat. Hello. Um, so these are other sources of fats. Um, coconut is itself. Uh, there's a recipe back there if we didn't for the fat bombs, for fat bombs that's just fat mixed up with a few other things that uh, that you can eat as a snack in that way it's a nice way to get fat in your diet like i said the hamburger you, you're going to want to go for the fattiest hamburger not the leanest stuff um but all kinds of cheese sour cream is good you know i just had uh, chili last night lots of sour cream <laughs> <laughs> uh, so has anybody tried incorporating more fat into what they're eating at all over the past couple of weeks? What, what's, what's the well, example of I'm a pre-diabetic. Okay. I'm determined not to stay. I'm determined to get rid of it. Good. Good. Well, so, I it, it, it is very, you know, it's counterintuitive because it goes against everything we've always been told by doctors and, and commercials and weight loss programs. Uh, but adding fat in, you'll find your appetite actually goes down. So you're, you're eating less naturally because your appetite is regulating. Um, if on there, there are fat bombs. Has anybody ever tried a fat bomb? Mm -hmm. So there are hundreds of different ones that you can make. Basically, it's, it's a high fat uh, little sources of energy. Uh, the first ones I ever made were actually out of, out of a hormonal desperation. <laughs> because I needed to have like I, something that like would conquer that chocolate craving. And I had read on a message board about melting coconut oil, melting dark chocolate with it, and putting some unsweetened coconut, and then freezing it to make a candy. That's essentially a fat bomb. And it also 
taste it just like candy. Because <laughs> I used a very low carb dark chocolate. It was the lint, I think the 80%. And I had just shaped, you know, like it was like a half a serving with the coconut oil, melted it all together, and put it in an ice cream tray. And so it's an ice cream tray. And that, that's pretty much what the fat bombs are. Some of them add cream cheese, some of them add peanut butter. You have ones that are cheesecake flavored, coffee flavored. Uh, but they're good for when, you know, you don't, you're not really hungry. Because part of this is all, also listening to your body and eating when you're hungry. But, you, you know, you're just a little bit hungry. And the fat will cut your appetite. So I think in the, in the handouts, there are a couple of different ones. I think there's a vanilla one. I think there was like a lemon cheesecake flavored one. Um, but they are very easy to make. You can make them at the start of the week and keep them in the fridge. Um, and then just pop one. Uh, even if, like for breakfast, if you make one that's a coffee flavor for breakfast or a cheesecake flavor for breakfast, uh, it might hold you over. So those are something to, to keep in mind, um, especially if you use them as a treat at night if you need to have that little bit of something. Um, you know what people often ask, why do people lose weight on low carb diets? Bottom line is, you eat less food. Mm -hmm. Okay, you eat fewer calories. I just eat about 22, 2300 calories a day. I'm now 16, 1700 calories. Because when you don't get hungry, food isn't all that interesting anymore. And it's hunger that drives people to eat. So by eating fat, you lower the hunger, and by lowering the hunger, you go, that was enough. Mm -hmm. See, remember I said about the French paradox? It's not the French paradox, it's the, it's the French proof that <laughs> low carb, high fat food works because they have the lowest heart disease rate in the Western world. And they don't have overweight people in France. I mean, it's starting now because they're eating American food. Yeah. But if you eat the, the standard, you know, small portions of high-fat foods, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we were talking about the shirataki noodles before, uh, which are tofu noodles. But if you want to up your fat with that, you could do a garlic and olive oil and toss it with the noodles. And, you know, you have dinner made in, what, 10 minutes maximum? But it's good high fat, um, and you have the, the tofu, uh, which is very low carb. So, uh, incorporating fat is, it may seem strange at first, but, but you don't need a lot of it. We're not saying, you know, take half that container of coconut oil and, and melt it and eat fat. We're talking like, you know, a tablespoon, because they are, they are very calorie dense if you look at it, but you're going to realize that your calories are still way low even though you're eating full fat. Uh, I log mine in my fitness pal just to keep track of my carbs, and my calories are between 14 and 1500 calories a day. And I'm eating mayonnaise, avocado, avocado oil, um, full fat sushi salad dressing. You know, just naturally doing it. Do you fry in coconut oil? I do. And you fry in olive oil? I will fry in coconut oil. I actually have a thing of avocado oil that I got at TJ Maxx for six bucks, which is like really cheap. Um, and I, I fried actually avocado slices mm -hmm. to get them brown. Chicken wings. So you do that on mm -hmm. avocado oil? Avocado oil or coconut oil. And that powder you can melt down and fry in that too? That's actually, the, the coconut oil is, um, it's thick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a grease. Yeah. Oh, so you, like can, you can actually do that. It's like grease, so yeah. When the temperature yeah, like in the room gets up to right. over 75 degrees, it'll turn to liquid. Right. Nothing yeah, wrong with that. Now it's yeah, when it's yeah. too hot. Now it's too. Yeah. Right, you want to? I thought that was because it was hydrogenated. Yeah, but canola oil is one of those oils I was just talking about. It's it's a processed seed oil. I'm you know I'm I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world for you, and there are most of the research you're going to hear about in the popular press is that switching. Uh, to PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, okay, which is things like canola oil, will be better uh, for your heart over time. Um, as I said last week, Walter Willett from the Harvard School of Public Health was saying 10 years ago we shouldn't be concerned about fat. Fat's actually good for us, and there's some um, epidemiological evidence that the more uh, uh, polyunsaturated fatty oils that people eat, the lower the heart disease rate is. Well, what's happening is they're consuming fewer carbs, they're getting more fats, okay? So it's really just proving 
for the point. And the other thing you can do is it add a little bit of butter yeah. in with the oil. You know how that, if, if, you were, if you were shallow frying in a non extra virgin olive oil, you'd add butter to raise the smoke point. Same, same kind of idea, but you do it for the flavor of the butter. You know? And the other thing, too, is increasing fat. Um, people who've done Atkins, and I know a lot of people have, the biggest thing that they always complain about is that they, their stomach tends to bother them. If they start to shut down, they get constipated. If you're increasing your dietary fat, that's going to take care of that. That's going to keep everything lubricated and moving. <laughs> it's also really good for skin, hair, and nails. nails. Okay. Yeah. Um, people who have trouble with that, once they go on a high fat diet, that you know, a lot of it turns up. Um, joint pain, yeah. all kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. So. It's just so, this is the first time I've been here, and this is just so opposite of everything. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, I have been like uh, eating both fat, and I just put on three pounds in the last five years. There you go. Yeah. It couldn't have said it better. The, the advice we've been giving people for the last 40 years has been 180 degrees away from what we should be telling people. And now it's up to people like the two of us uh, to try to convince people that they need to go back to the way. If you look at any black and white movie, okay, how do people look? They're thin as a rail. What were they eating? Okay, 40% of the diet's in fat. Today, we try to convince people to eat less than 30%. It's true, my father was the 91 year old last summer. Yeah. Oh, I hate this, but I mean, he's 91. He'd, he'd take the cream and he milk the cows and they have the cream. They ate butter, they made their own cheese. He loved the fat. Absolutely. He loved it. And, and every culture in the world, up until 1951, thought fat was good for you. There was never any shred of a notion that fat was bad for people. And then I'll tell you the story of Ansel Keys sometime, who changed everything and began the obesity epidemic in America and the rest of the world. We have to finish for now. If you'd like to stick around, we'll be happy to talk with you some more. But I want to honor. Oh, uh, the book you mentioned right in the beginning, the Big Fat Surprise okay. by Nina Peichholz. It's a New York Times bestseller. You can get it for right around $20 now. Uh, and actually, she has a, uh, a quick read version for $7 on Amazon. So it's the essential read. You know, it's a very it's a very dense book with a lot of research in there. If you don't like that, get the quick read and you'll get a point. Uh, okay? So very nice. So thank you, Kate.